It is October 12th and 1941. I've just completed the weather determination first player determination set phase of turn four. And wanted just to quickly summarize what happened. Uh, the weather is still clear. The ground is dry. Planes have full flight capabilities. The Germans won the first player choice roll, and they chose the Russians to go first because they want a chance at a double turn next turn and are gambling that the Russians can't um, press the advantage so hard this turn to crush their chances at offensive uh, on the 15th or on, uh, on their turn. So we'll see how that goes. The, Rush the Germans do have a little bit of a little bit of situation here. I summed it up last video, but generally the Russians do have some battles they've won. But I think the general thought is that the Russians are going to get a bunch of supply points in. They're going to ship them in, and you know maybe the Germans can take them. And the Russians are. Uh, pretty safe on zone of control and stuff, so they'll, uh, really mostly what they're going to do is spend the turn trying to get units back into supply and such. We'll hopefully see if the Russians can salvage their position, which they should, and they're in some fairly good, good straits. So, Let's uh let's see how that goes. I've just completed the Russian turn for turn four and we are looking at some some victories, some draws, not too many losses. But I actually did some fighting this time, did some supplying, didn't take uh wasn't too difficult to get this turn done, but let's get into what happened. First off, I actually marked where certain areas were reinforcements points because I keep rule flipping for that. So if you see that little red border on the plexiglass, that indicates where reinforcements are happening. Over here, I uh, tried to disorganize some troops and tried to attack them. Mainly I wanted to take out this headquarters right here, and this really, the axis should have gone first uh, to prevent that. And really it got defended though, the breakdown regiment having four action rating left them getting surprise on the Russian divisions there, and basically they totally deflected that, saving the axis from getting totally broken here. If that happened, that would have been dire, dire straits for the Axis. Over here, I've basically saved my pocket by retreating them, which is frowned upon by Soviets but in this front, but... Well, basically, uh, the Axis will be able to enter that town and, and have build a front here, maybe link up with their guys up here. But, at the, but on the other hand, I save these units from having to be supplied by tree bark soup or any other means. And Rezev is relatively okay. I tried to attack the 36 motorized there. I didn't get him to, to die, unfortunately. Didn't get those units to the dead pile, so there's still that unit harassing me in, in Rezev. Um, over here... I uh, I also tried to fight um, a couple of units to drive them off, and I did. I, I did drive off uh, a few guys at the cost of some step losses. The Russians are getting slowly and slowly weaker and weaker, but they still have a ton of units and are transporting more each turn. So, and a bunch of units are about to reinforce Rezev, even though they're it's kind of a losing front in that sense. And I've got some train busting markers down to slow the axis advance. We'll see how that goes. Over here, 
upgraded a hedgehog and sent some units forward. Arguably should have attacked there, but at the same time I've got good defenses. In fact, I was going to attack there until he forgot, but I'm going to just uh, pretend that my other player, even though I'm playing myself, was very stringent about if you make a mistake, live with it. And that seems to be in the spirit of uh, the gamers, games of OCS, the people who make uh, this game are called the gamers. And I'm, I'm just going to live with the mistake here, even though that's a really poor play. Uh, simply just to keep the game going, and backseeing can only go so far. And it's still relatively viable for me not to attack right now over here and let the Axis try to come towards me because they're going to spend the entire turn just restocking on supplies. I've even marked Smolensk over here with a little bit of an index card saying, feed me. They really need supplies to get anywhere. Like, almost all the supplies are going to go into Smolensk probably. Over here I tried a daring offensive that might, if I want it, might... Uh, make the Axis concede really early on, where I got these tanks to try to attack this extender here. There's an extender under there, and if I managed to take it, it would cause a ton of troops that need fuel to move and don't have any to be out of supply, and essentially it would have caused a huge pocket, and that would be incredibly bad for the Axis, and I would have to really ponder if I could save them. But thankfully that didn't happen yet. The garrison for that extender is really, really thick. Like, there's a lot of people defending that extender right now. For good reason, as seeing the Russians are going after it. And hopefully the Axis will be able to counter that tank group in a second. They might actually be able to do so with a well-timed uh, combat even though they might have to sacrifice some more internal stocks, which is really bad. I'm really discovering as the Axis that eating internal stocks just means you're going to take... you're going to have to eat so many supply points that are, it's going to bite you in the ass so hard later. Like, I'm three turn... basically I spent one turn using internal stocks and have spent the next three turns limping my butt off trying to recover. Over here, I just retreated some troops to keep supply chains going, but didn't do any fighting. And uh, so Bryansk is kind of uh, static right now. Over here, I did push a couple of tank battalions, these guys, over here, and pushed the, I think, 18th Panzer out a little bit. So that went well. I think I lost a step there. The Russians are losing steps. They're kind of just like tanking the hits while they go forward, and that seems to be about how they play both, and that makes sense given the history to me. I set some reserves up of cavalry in these swamps here. Essentially, they're in well supply, so I just flipped them over to combat mode and have them ready to try to react to whatever these shenanigans are doing. I saved these guys from being out of supply, minus one tank that I tried to do a breakout with, and the last said tank could not break out and just ended up getting destroyed. I wonder if you can do breakout with units that can't be fueled. I'll have to read, read that rule. Either way, it did die. We can pretend it died from out of supply otherwise. Um, sent some reinforcements to Kharkov, including a lot of supply points. Kharkov, Rezev, which is, again, the front that's relatively in danger way up th there. And Voshnya over here all got a decent amount of supply points. So Kharkov is slowly regaining its front a little bit. I um, restored supply lines over here and tried to attack some guys, and it worked out relatively okay. I think I decided against attacking this person because he's in a swamp. But I did drive out, I did take out a division and disorganized uh, another guy, so worked out okay. So this front is a little bit more, 
of a draw than it was an advantage of the Axis a moment ago. Uh, that's the power of Russians getting a second turn in a row. But the Axis anticipated that, and just since they need, need supplies anyways, they didn't want to risk a double turn later. Hopefully that was the right move. Probably not. Guderian may have made a blunder there. Over here, the Russians managed to pierce this little line right here and traversed across the river to get in supply to Pavlograd. And that means that where that train busting marker is, there's a headquarters under that 1222 division and the train busting is going to slow people down to and what that all means is that that little city over there is well defended is now a safe in supply by the with the russians until the axis kind of do some overruns and tear apart things again this city is not even a consideration yet uh, there's a major river there, and that's really hard to attack across. Uh, the attempt now for the Axis is to pierce this region and go around and take that city, which has a very a level 3 air base, so I transferred a lot of airplanes there. I'm using the rule now of Russian aircrafts can only do the offensive missions of like barrage, train busting, and fighter sweeps within 20 hexes of their base. That was apparently an errata rule later on. And it makes sense, but it does have a lot of trickiness with some long-range aircraft now being neutered. Over here, no combat. It's, it's the same thing of not a consideration of the Russians. They're so they're well defended and the onus is on the Axis to actually get anywhere here and the Russians can just kind of sit there, sip on some tea, enjoy themselves. Over here we still have the anime drawings. I still feel bad about that. Over here I upgraded uh, some hedgehogs. I can't believe upgrade any hedgehogs where there's enemy zone of control, so these guys are still at level 1. But I did upgrade this one to level 2 since the Axis wasn't next to it, so they're outside of zone of control. And I'm transferring units into Crimea to bolster the lines and that's going okay. Did a lot of aircraft transfers, but not a lot of aircraft mis like offensive missions, like barrages and stuff, simply because of that new ruling. I also am trying to find out if aircrafts can, as reinforcements, enter any airbase on the map, or simply can only enter um, airbases listed in the uh, in hexes matching the reinforcement entry points, because if that's if the latter is the case, and that means only like one airbase in Moscow is an entry point, and like a holding box down here in Sevastopol. Like there's three entry points as opposed to a lot. But once I find out that rule, I'll play whatever people say. Because it's manageable either way, it just requires a lot more aircraft shuffling with the, with the limited aircraft base entry. So the Russians are doing pretty well. They, uh, I think they're still going to have to retreat and the Axis are still going to push forward into Moscow and all of that pretty well. They're going to get a little bit forward and then stall and then swing back like the history world ruled out. But, the, but again, the Axis do have their work cut out for them and are going to really have to, I'm going to really have to think about how I'm going to push forward on all of these, all of these different little uh, offensive fronts on this on the war in the east so I'll keep you updated on how on how the axis turn goes and we'll see how that goes and until then it's the bottom of turn four and the axis have just finished their turn so let's go over some stuff that happened most of it was just recovering freaking supplies because all of my troops had such low ammo. Again, I've basically eaten through every supply depot just to restock troops and I'm not really surprised. Maybe even on the next turn if the Axis win the roll they'll choose to go first. We'll see. And over here 
got some recovery, uh, saved my skin on getting the HQ back to in supply to all of this, so the threat's kind of mitigated. I got one of these divisions to kick back that cavalry right there, so that was nice. The Axis still can do some powerful attacks and all of that. Down over here is still kind of a stalemate front between the Axis and the Russians. The swamps are kind of just uh, sitting there. Because of the swamp terrain, it's kind of like I don't want to fight there unless I have overwhelming odds. Over here, because of the Russian retreat, the Axis have claimed this town and now have more rail access and can further push and maybe even link up with the all the divisions over here where this truck extender was. And finally take Rezev. That would be nice. Down here on the road to Vashnia, we have lots of... Uh, a little bit of action. Most of it was just restocking. I still have troops. I still have like one and a half supply points of stuff to restock to. So it's still like a lot of supply points to refill. And over here, the same deal. I don't recall there being too much combat here. Just a retreat and just a little bit of a stalemate. Small Ensk is just kind of still needing lots of feeding. In fact, on the aircraft refit, it's not going to be able to refit aircraft. It's already out of supply. Points, that is. And this was just mostly troops advancing to this center point. And eventually they'll take Brzev from the flank. Uh, I don't think we're going to dive down to Bryansk with other troops. In fact, I've been kind of leaving it alone, and maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should go with all of these troops down to Bryansk, though I do have lots of this cavalry and lots of th these guys, and once they get some more supply points here, I can actually run up from the south into Bryansk with uh, some fairly strong troops. I guess I've been focusing a little too much down here with these divisions trying to take, uh, I think it's called Legov right there. And mostly just converting rail, trying to get this double rail to that town so I can have better things going on here. The rail conversion's going okay. I learned a rule that you can rail convert lines that aren't even connected to your track. So I could reach some towns quicker than I thought I could, which should be nice. I also found out about the aircraft rule that aircraft, when they reinforce, can enter through... Um, stuff uh, through any airbase, not just the ones that are reinforcement hexes, which is really useful. Over here was the closest thing to combat I had. Uh, had some terrible rolls right here, but it worked to my advantage. I killed out... Um, I took out the troop that was over there, but and then retreated. And I retreated away, essentially causing zone of control issues where uh, these troops are essentially going to have to backtrack um, back into Kharkov, and that's kind of neat. Down here... So most of this wasn't really combat intensive, it was just, again, recovery. Um, I wonder if these guys were in supply. Did I ever check that? I think I did. Yeah, they're in supply from this guy, is able to fuel them, likely. Yeah, I, I checked that. That's weird. But, you know, this is more troops entering this front, and hopefully this little Karkov's offensive is going to work out okay. Over here, not much. Transport supplies, restock some troops. Um, hopefully once I take this riverbank, I can go south and start taking more stuff. That would be nice and start taking some towns over here, and I think near one of these towns I can get a... Um, I think Pavlograd, actually. One of these towns I can get um, a, rail, a rail transport from the... kind of steal it from the Russians and can uh, use Russian rail gauge to transport supplies a little bit. Still nothing down here. I'm trying to get supply points into this region of the enemy at the gates kind of segment and uh, it's going slow. I really don't have anything over here to attack with until I get some truck points. 
So I'm, I'm going to rejigger my supply transport here. Overall, kind of a middling turn, not nearly as much offensive as especially the first turn. A little bit, like seriously, the last three Axis turns have been recovering from the very first turn of the game. And really I kind of overshot um, what I was trying to do on the first turn. So the Russians definitely have the advantage. And it should be noted that I'm running out of time doing the turns of the game, and also it's kind of the holidays right now, so I'm not going to be able to upload as much. So I might do some wrap-up and final thoughts soon, depending on how this goes, or partial thoughts, but... I really hope I can play more of this game. I've been having a great time with it so far. It's really neat seeing the logistical challenges in this version of OCS. In stuff like Tunisia 2 and Sicily, there's much more tight quarters, and in this it's so open, it, but you still have to stretch really far for supplies. It's, it's really fun playing with all the toys provided in this game, like truck extenders, aircraft landings eventually, and all sorts of just supply shenanigans, which really is a large part of this game, of course in the series, but even this one, where I don't have enough tokens to really pull offensives all the time with just standard attacks. Really it benefits me, on both sides really, to sneak around the enemy supply lines and starve them out, especially for the Axis, but partially the Russians too. Uh, and there's still a different game going on for each of them. I, I think Really, this is kind of a fantastic kind of look into this uh, kind of his this topic, but also uh, you know it would also be a pretty fun game to play uh, face to face or against an opponent. Though I think the downside of that is the turns are so long. It honestly might be better just to play both sides as a team, like uh, just keep everybody involved. I, I think. This game serves well as not necessarily a simulation, but as kind of like a toy box uh, rather than a com competitive game, though there is certainly an element of that. Um, if I was to play this with an opponent, I'd definitely do play by email or something because the game takes so long as is. Anyways, those are some of my thoughts and some wrap up on turn four. Uh, the Russians are still, I like, I, I think they're in an advantage. The, Axis are going a little slow, and the incoming mud season's going to really hit the Axis hard when I roll that weather die roll. Well, that's turn four.